Good morning, class. Happy New Year, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well, including your family and loved ones. So, for our lesson today, I have prepared a pre-recorded video lesson because I want everyone to have an access of our lesson free from noise background and any other distractions. I am expecting that you listen and watch the lesson because I have important instruction the last part of this pre-recorded lesson for your task number 13. Before we begin with our lesson, these are the objectives that are expected to learn. By the way, I also divided our lesson into two major parts, where in the first part will be the explanation of what is a concept and the different approaches to explain a concept. On the other hand, the second part of this lesson is to discuss the different kinds of concept paper and the format of a concept paper as well. To begin with, let us define a concept. According to www.vocabulary.com, a concept is a general idea about a thing or a group of things derived from a specific instances or occurrences. In addition, according to encyclopedia.com, that concepts are customarily regarded as intermediaries between mind and world. They are also the basic elements of thoughts and the tools by which one classifies things. Also, concepts are central to the philosophy of mind and they are often implicated in theories of meaning. Lastly, according to Stanford Encyclopedia, that a concept is a building block of thoughts. In order for us to explain what is a concept, there are three ways to explain. Number one is definition. Second is explication, and the other one is clarification. For the definition, it is a method or concept explanation that has something to do with making abstract ideas clearer by providing the meaning of an abstract concept. Usually, we use our dictionary in looking for the meaning of the concept. And also, it answers the question, what does the concept mean? And a definition includes the term to be defined, as well as the detailed exposition of the term through the use of illustrations, examples, and descriptions. Under the general scope of definition, there are three types. These are informal, formal, and extended definitions. For the different types of definition, for the informal definition, this is done by simply providing a brief explanation of a term or a concept. For example, to cook a roll of vitamin E is naturally found in vegetable oil, fish, and nuts. On the other hand, for the formal definition, this is done by incorporating the term to be defined, the general category of the term, and the quality that makes it unique from the other items in the category. For example, vitamin E is a light yellow fat-soluble vitamin that acts as an antioxidant. If you're going to observe, it is color-coded. For the term to be defined, which is the word vitamin, and for the general category of the term, which is the word antioxidant, and for the quality that makes it unique from the other items in the category, is the vitamin E is a light yellow fat-soluble. Stepping up further, standard definition is more complicated because it is a combination of informal definition and formal definition. It is a detailed way of explaining a concept and maybe a paragraph long. This incorporates the different patterns of definition that includes formal and informal, comparison and contrast, and also narration and description and others. To further explain what is an extended definition, standard definition defines and explains a single term, concept, or object. Also, it pins down the meaning of a specific word or defines an abstract concept. Lastly, it goes deeper than a simple dictionary definition. To give you an example, here is a paragraph showing an example of an extended definition. Now, if you want to read this entire material, you may pause this video now. The second way of explaining a concept is explication. 
It is a method of explanation used mainly for literary criticism. This is done by snipping certain lines, phrases, verses, or even the entire text itself, and then interpreting or explaining them in detail. Also in using explication, one should state his or her thesis statement as you can remember from our previous lesson about this statement, in the introduction and then writing the detailed analysis of the passage or text, depending on the type of criticism that is being used, including a description of how the text itself was constructed, and then ending it with a restatement or thesis statement made earlier as well as the summary of the major arguments given. If you want to see an example of an explication, you may use this link below. For an additional information about the format of explication, explication should begin with the large issues and basic design of the poem and work through each line to the more specific details and patterns. The first paragraph should present the large issues it should inform the reader which conflicts are dramatized and should describe the dramatic situation of the speaker. The explication does not require a formal introductory paragraph and then the writer should simply start explicating immediately. Lastly, we have clarification. This entails the analysis of a concept by looking at the examples and specifying some of its characteristics to arrive at one working definition, which can be used throughout the paper. So in simpler terms, we take a concept, break it down into its component types of examples, and then explain the examples. After that, after specifying the examples, a general understanding of the concept is then gained. So that wraps up the first part of our lesson which is the understanding of what is a concept. So for the part of our lesson, we will be discussing about what are concept papers. A concept paper is usually submitted prior to the submission of a project proposal. Also, concept paper also provides an overview of the project which allows stakeholders to have a clear understanding of the foundations of a project for the purpose of funding. Another thing is a concept paper typically answers the following questions. What is the project or research all about? What are the reasons for conducting the said project or research? And lastly, how will the project or research be carried out according to Sipasha and Barak in 2016? So let us identify the uses of a concept paper. First is, it serves as the foundation of a full project proposal. Second, it helps determine the feasibility of a project before it is implemented. Third, it is used to pique the interest of potential funding agencies. And lastly, it is used to gather important feedback regarding the presented ideas before preparing the full proposal. So actually, a concept paper is like a movie trailer wherein you give a glimpse of what the movie is all about. When talking about concept paper, we have two major types. One is project concept paper and the other one is a research concept paper. For the project, we have five parts. Number one is the cover page. Second is the introduction, where you have to include the information about the funding agency, the mission of the agency, as well as providing the reasons why funding should be given to the project. Third is the rationale or the background, where you have to state the gap in the knowledge to be addressed of your project. You have to state the problem that needs to be solved as well as state the project significance. Number four is the project description, wherein you have to state the goals and the objectives of the project, also the methodology, the timeline, the benefits of the outcome, and how success will be evaluated. And lastly, project needs and costs, where you have to illustrate the outline of the main budget, including item description and amount, 
how will the budget be used, personnel and equipment. For the second major type of concept paper is research. We have seven parts of this kind of concept paper. Number one is title page, wherein you have to include the research title, the name of proponents and school, the date of submission. Second is the background of the study, wherein you have to include status quo, the research gap, the problems that needs to be addressed by your research, your reasons why you are conducting the research, the theoretical and practical implications of the proposed research. And third is preliminary literature review. So you really have to read some previous study related to your research. Number four, statement of the problem or objectives, wherein you have to start first with a general problem and including the specific research questions or objectives. Number five, a bridge methodology, where you have to indicate the context of your participants, your research instrument or tools, as well as your data collection procedure and the data analysis scheme. And number six is your timeline. And lastly is references. I will be teaching you how to use the correct format of citation and referencing. For your task number 13, I want you to create a concept map showing the brief summary of our lesson today about concept paper. Use your notebook or any sheet of paper. Please send a photo of your output through our Google Classroom. To give you an idea on how to create a concept map, below are the examples of concept map for your reference. It is up to you on how you create your own concept map. Lastly, for this topic, you will also have to submit a concept paper, but it will be done by group. I will provide further instructions on how to create and submit your concept paper.